What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to look at data tables for KVMD and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at data tables for KVMD. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships with all my courses, videos, and books. One time fee just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, like I said, in this video, we're gonna start to look at data tables. And this is a data table. It's just a, you know, basic table. We've got some headers, first name, last name, email address, phone number. We've got some rows. We've got some check boxes. We can click this and they all go. We can click one at a time and all that good stuff. And that's what we're gonna start to look at in this video. And that's probably gonna take us a couple of videos because this is a pretty big topic and there's a lot of stuff and they're always adding and changing things to this one because it's not really a sort of settled widget, but it's still, you can do a lot of cool things with it, and we're gonna to start to look at that in this video. So let's head back over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to all the other videos in the KV playlist, over 50 now, so check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file called table.py, and this is our basic KV starter code that we always have. Now, we usually have a KV file as well. In this video, we're not. We're just gonna do everything in this Python file. Now, you could do this stuff in the KV file, and we will eventually, but, I don't know, it's a little bit complicated to do this, and so I'm gonna show you just how to do it first in the Python file itself, because if you sort of think this through, when are you gonna use a table? Usually, you're gonna use it with a database, right? So you're gonna pull data out of a database, and you're gonna put it up on the screen somehow. Likely, you're gonna use a data table for that. So a lot of times, you're gonna be connecting with a database on the back end in this Python file. It just sort of makes sense to grab that stuff and then just do all the table stuff in the Python file itself. Like I said, you could do it in the Kivi file and we will eventually, but we're gonna start out with just this file. So, all right, this is our basic stuff. Now, we always return this builder with our with our Kivi file and we're not gonna do that this time, so I'm just gonna comment that out. Instead, we're just going to return screen. So we need a screen, so let's come up here and import it first. So we can go from Kivi MD dot UIX dot screen. We wanna import screen, okay? And then let's just come down here and define our screen here. So define screen. And let's just call it screen. Set that equal to a screen. And we're good to go there. And then here we're just gonna return that screen, right? So if we save this, head back over to our terminal, and we're on Python table.py, we just get a blank app, right? So, okay. So in order to use the data table, we have to import it. So let's go from kvmd.uix.data tables. That's what we're gonna use, a data table. We wanna import the MD data table. And notice the capitalization. These two are capitalized, MD, the D and data, and the T and table are also capitalized. So, okay, let's come down here and let's create a table. So let's uh, define table. And I'm just gonna call it table. And let's set that equal to an MD data table. Now inside of here is where we're gonna do all the stuff, right? So. Just to start out, we can define what our columns are gonna be. So that's gonna be column underscore data. And we set that equal to, and this is a Python list. And inside of here, we just use tuples like so to put whatever columns we want. And inside of here, we just define the column. So let's say we want a first name. We also want a last name. And let's say email address and maybe like a phone number, something like that. Now, that's great, but we also have to sort of tell the program how big these columns need to be. And for that, we need to use something called a display pixel, and we have to actually import that in order to use it. So let's come up here and go from, and this is kivi.metrics, and we wanna import DP, and that's sort of short for display pixels, if you care, but you know, basically allows us to say how many pixels in width we want to use. And now notice this is from Kivi. It's not from Kivi MD like all these other things. We're just pulling this straight out of actual Kivi itself. So from Kivi.metrics, import DP. And then down here, we can just define those things just by calling a DP function and then passing in how many pixels we want. So if we want 30 pixels, we do something like that. So let's just pop that in there. And a pixel is a one by one sort of almost millimeter, but you know, all like images are made up of pixels. That's just basically what this is. So, okay, so in order to actually use this, we have to put the table onto our screen. So let's come down here 
And let's say add table widget to screen. So let's go screen dot add underscore widget. And we just want to pass in that table. And this table is this table with all of this stuff in it, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. Let's head back over to our terminal. Let's run this guy python table.py. And when we do, we see, okay, we've got some columns and that looks good. Now this isn't really centered or anything. We'll deal with that in a second. So now let's add some rows. How do we do that? Well, let's come back here. And right after the column data here, we slap in a comma. Now we can add a row underscore data. And same thing, this is gonna be a Python list. And inside of here, we can put, again, tuples. So if we want, you know, let's say two of these things. And here we just define what we want. So let's say the first name for this one is gonna be John. And we separate these with commas. So elder, that email address is, let's say, john at codemy.com. And phone number is one, two, three, or maybe like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, something like that. And I'm just gonna copy all of this and paste it in a second time. But here we're gonna have like, let's say Mary Elder. This is gonna be Mary at codemy.com. And this one will be four, five, six, maybe a different phone number, one, one, two, three, something like that. So if we go ahead and save this, head back over here, run it again, we get our stuff. Very cool and very easy. So, okay, and you can see by default, it sort of, you know, has this hover thing, which is nice. If we try and resize this, it doesn't really resize. So we need to play around with this a little bit. So let's spruce this up, make it look a little nicer. So let's come back over here. And inside of our MD data table, we can put other things that we would usually put in a Kivi file, like, position hint and you know things like that. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go, we'll start out with size underscore hint. And we'll set that equal to, now let's go 0 0.9 by 0 0.6, something like that. Slap a comma after it, save this, run it, see what that did. Okay, so now we've got this sort of box around it, but it's not really placed correctly. So we wanna center this whole box thing with this nice little shadow. So we can do that with our position hint. We've done that before lots of times. So I'm gonna come up here and go position underscore hint. Same deal, oops, this is that. And inside of here, we could do like center underscore X and put that at like, I don't know what, 0 0.5, stick it in the middle. And we go center underscore Y. And let's also put that at like 0 0.5. Okay, that should be good. Let's go ahead and save this, run it, see what that looks like. Okay, looking better, right? So now it doesn't resize, but you'll notice, look at this, there's this little bar here. You can drag and pull, and that's what sort of Kivi does by default. So that looks good. Now we can change this all to sort of fit in a smaller thing by changing the DP, right? So remember, head back over here, we put these all at 30. So maybe we wanna put them at, like, I don't know, 10 or something, right? Just sort of play around with these to get them to be whatever it is you want. And when we do, oh man, they're all crammed in there. That's no good. So I would then maybe try 15, right? Oops. There we go, save this, run it. Yeah, it's sort of crammed in a little bit better, but now if you resize this thing, it sort of fits. Whatever app you're making, whatever data you have, you can play around with the DPs yourself to get it to be whatever size you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and change all these back to, let's see, 30, what they were. And okay, so now what about check marks? Well, if we want checks, it's really easy. We just come up here and we set check to equal true. Save this, run it again. And now we have these nice check mark boxes, right? Just by default, they work, and that's cool. So that's a data table. Now, if we wanna actually click on these and have something happen, we need to create little functions to deal with that. And I will talk about that a little bit here. I don't wanna get into it in great detail because this video is getting a little long and I don't wanna overwhelm you with this stuff because this is a lot of weird looking stuff, but we can come down here and we can bind. So let's say bind the table. And here we just go table.bind. 
And we're calling table because, of course, that's what we named our table right there, right? So we want a table.bind. And there's several things we could do. We could go on underscore check underscore press and set that equal to self dot, I don't know, checked. Let's just call it. You know, here we're creating a function called checked. Name it anything you want, but we'll just call it checked. And we can also go table dot bind and we can go on underscore row underscore press. And we'll set that equal to self dot, let's say row checked. So now we can create these two functions down here, outside of here. So let's uh, function for check presses and let's define checked. We wanna pass in self as always, but we also need to pass in the instance underscore table and the current underscore row. And you'll see what these are in just a second. And let's also create a function for row presses. So here we'll define, and we call this one row checked. So to find row checked, again, we wanna pass in self and we wanna pass in instance underscore table. That's the table instance itself. In this, and this, instead of sending current row in, we wanna send in, we wanna pass in instance underscore row. And that's good. So let's just print out and see what these things are. So let's print out the instance underscore table and the current underscore row. Down here, let's print out the instance underscore table and the instance underscore row. I spell instance right? Instance, yep, looks like it. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it. And now this will just print it to the terminal just so it'll show us like what's going on here. So for instance, if I press this, now we close this. Remember I, I clicked on John Elder, right? So here it passes in the instance of the table. It passes in the data itself in a Python list that you can then sort of play around with. John Elder, johnacodemy.com. And it also passes in some other stuff, right? So we're not gonna dive into all of this stuff in great detail in this video. I just wanna show you how to do it. We'll dive into this later, but uh, that's what happens there. But also here, we have this row thing. So we can click here on the row. When I click on, for instance, Mary, now we close, it passes in that object itself. And it doesn't look as useful. Like in the last one, where did it go? At least we had this Python list, right? It's not even doing that, but it's passing in the object itself, right? And again, I'll show you how to use this stuff later on, or you can play around with it, maybe figure it out yourself, but it's passing the object and we can then dive into that later on. So. That's quick and easy way of how you can access those things, sort of. Like I said, you know, we'll dive into that in more detail in the next couple of videos. This video is getting a little bit long and it's Monday morning, so I don't wanna put so much in this video. But like I said, we'll look at more details for this thing in the next couple of videos. But you can see, pull this back up very quickly here. Oh, here we click this one and we close it. It passes everything. So you can see John and Mary, right? That's cool. So again, very cool, very easy. We've got this nice sort of formatted table. We've got this nice little hover thing. We've got check boxes and we can sort of use and uh, it's looking pretty good. And there's not a whole lot to this, right? We create our basic MD table. We do our regular styling stuff. We position hint and size hint it and do all that sort of thing. And then you just like pass in your column data and row data and not too bad. And just don't forget to import your MD data table up here. You need these data pixels, display pixels, I guess you would call them. And uh, we also want to import our screen and that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off memberships. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.